What's poppin', man? Mr. J Hill. Um, special guest in the building, Young Dylan. What up, man? Yo, what's up? What's up? How you feeling, bro? Yo, I'm feeling good. I just got done finishing the third season of Tyler Praise, Young Dylan. I like it just got done. I literally rushed myself to get dressed, then came straight to here. I appreciate it. Um, first of all, if we can, cause um, I'm not too familiar with the story, right? But I, it's funny because you be like, where you from? From Baltimore? And it was like, he was like, you from Annapolis? I didn't know it was Annapolis, but I knew he was from that area. Yes. I remember seeing you on Ellen. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, the Tyler Perry thing. Uh, you even did some things with uh, Cardi B. Yes, sir. Um, even DJ Khaled. Yep. Can we go to the beginning? How did this start? Like, where did young... I remember you being so young. I remember you being young, but what happened? Like, tell me how you got put on, um, if, if we had to say. So, it was basically just viral moments, you feel me? Uh, I, I did a lot of cover songs when I was young. It was just me and my father in the car, and I remember Don't. By, by Bryson Tiller. It was okay. really popular at that time. So I, I did the video, and it went viral everywhere on social media. And that's when Ellen called me. Then, like, a few months later, I got on Ellen. I almost fell off the car, car but we ain't going to talk about that. Because you wanted to perform on the car, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And then that. I was performing on Ellen. Then I went to the Billboard Awards. I went to NBA All-Star. I went to Drake Night in Toronto. Toronto was beautiful, but it was mad cold there. And, uh, you know, that's basically how it all happened. So how, how old are you now? Like 12, 13? 13. 13, okay. Yeah. When this first started happening, where you were like 9, 8? I was about like 7, 6. Okay. Um, You rapping, don't. Uh, Bryson Tiller's don't. Yes. With your pops in the car. Yes, sir. What, what, what was so special about the rap that everybody was like, man, nah, this young Dylan guy got it? I don't even know for real. It's just a cover song. It was me. I was real young. I had a baby face. So, you know, all the girls was going to be on me, of course. <laughs> and the song was very popular at that time. It was, like, on the Billboard charts. So it was definitely going to get some clout in it. And it was just so crazy. And me being young, I didn't really, like, think nothing of it. I was just still being a kid. And my parents, I really didn't understand what was going on. But I used to watch Ellen when I was younger. And I always told my mom, I want to be on Ellen. Then when they said I was going to be on Ellen, I actually got some sense of, like, what I'm about to do. This is my dream since I was a baby. Well, I don't really remember <laughs> none when I was a baby, but it's been my dream since I was little. I like how you say, when I was young, when I was young, since I was a baby. And I'm just thinking, like, <laughs> you are a baby, but. Yeah, true. So, all right. So, I, want, I just want to paint this picture because it still sounds like you're skipping some things. You rapped on Bryson Tiller, don't. Yes, right? sir. But before that, you always wanted to be on Ellen. Was that in the song? Like, help me out. Because what made her say, I want young Dylan to come here? Nah, it wasn't even the song. It was like the regular song. I just did a cover of it. I knew okay. all the words to okay. the song. Okay. And basically, that's how it happened. Then it just kept going farther and farther. Then uh, Ellen put me on to Nickelodeon. You know, mm. I did a bunch of auditions for them. Then I got on all that on Nickelodeon. Wow. They saw, like, I knew my lines. Because, I, I, man, for me, I always have to feel prepared. And it's kind of easy. I I remember cover songs really easily. So I installed that into acting. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, it was just easy for me to remember. Then I was like, I got, like, to, like, 10 years old. I was like... Man, I'm going to, like, stop doing cover songs for a minute. I'm probably going to throw something in there a little bit, but I'm going to start freestyling, get more attention. Right. And then I started freestyling. That started going viral. So I was mm. like, oh, yeah, I'm different. So when you say the cover songs, you're doing the actual song, but in your own way, right? No, I'm doing the actual song, just like my voice on it. So are you rapping it? Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I was just going viral. That's I wonder what what was so special about you doing their songs, but in just in your own voice, I guess. Like I, maybe because it was a squeaker, because I was a mad squeaker, <laughs> and I had baby face stuff like that. You still got a baby face. I, yeah, I still do, <laughs> but like I was a squeaker and stuff like that. No, nah, that's super dope. So when you got on Ellen, you performed the song um, "Bryson Tiller Don't." Yep. And then obviously they loved it. Yep. Um, you start doing Nickelodeon. She invites you back to Ellen. How many times have you been on Ellen now? Like more than ten times, probably. Wow. I did Drake, Kanye. Uh, Chance the Rapper, all that. You just rap these songs word for word. Yeah, word That's for word. That's super dope. That's, I, can, I can imagine why it's so special because like, if you're like eight years old and to see somebody rap it word for word, it's like, oh, wow, this is dope. Yeah. Your parents, you never got in trouble for that? No. Mm. It's just my dad, he loved like songs. He probably t 
turn that joint up. Wow. Now I'm like, you please turn it down a little bit. <laughs> but like, it was just easy for me to remember because he always played the same songs for like a month because mm. they were popping at that time. Then he probably switched on to another song, stuff like that. How much success do you, how much do you think you owe it to your parents or your dad specifically? Man, I owe a lot to my parents, man. Mm. Because like, I can't. Wait, can you go on the plane without them? I'm not sure. You can, but I mean, if they I was... mean, I would rather want my parents to be with me on the plane. And, you know, I can't drive myself nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't do all the stuff that grown that they can do. Right. So I'm so thankful that I have a great supportive system because it, it couldn't be done without them. It's so dope to hear you say that because I remember when um when I was young, right? It was a uh, you, you might not know nothing about this, but 50, you know, 50 Cent. Yeah. So 50 Cent has a, 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 a album. Um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Yup, I know that. I think it's probably one of the best albums ever. So when I was young, probably around your age, I used to rap uh, Get Rich or Die Trying from like front to back. Yes, but sir. you know what my mom used to tell me? She said, you need to put that, t- that energy and that effort in doing your schoolwork. So the fact that you got parents who will actually support that, I think is, is super dope and it's different. I and mean, people need to see that. I mean, you kind of have to balance it. It's kind of hard to balance it. School and like working, <laughs> acting and rapping. But, like, I try to balance it as best as I can. I still get my schoolwork done. But I feel like school is still important. But I also think you should always chase your dreams. For sure. How are you balancing school and chasing your dreams right now? I mean, I'm doing pretty good now. You know, filming-wise, you know, uh, they had me doing school. It's the law to do school Mm. in state. So I have to do it. So we... I have to do three hours a day. I have to get three hours, and I probably get some bank in. But it's really rare for me to get school and bank. Bank is like like time that, like, say if you had three hours of school, but you can get five hours. You can bank two hours a day. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of hard for me to do when that. When you say bank, what, what, like, what, how, how, how do you do it? You, like, save it up. Like, say if you did three hours a day, you're kind of done with school, but they want you to bank the hours, so they want you to do five hours. They save the two hours. And if you have a day where you can't reach the three-hour mark, then they add that time back okay. into the three-hour okay. mark. Okay, that's cool. I never heard of that. So, are you filming in Atlanta now? Yes, I just got done filming. I mean, filming just got done. So, how, how, because you've been doing it for so long, um, Tyler Perry Studios. How long he's been in Atlanta now? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's been new, yeah, right? it's, yeah, it's new. It's definitely new. So it's like around three years, maybe. Yeah. So were you recording? Because you was. You started recording young, right? Yeah, I started. We started doing the show at, when I was ten, uh-huh. and uh, we got finished right before quarantine. Okay, okay. So, so y'all yeah, was already here in Atlanta. Yes. Wow. So what? What's what's some of the, the 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 your best highlights that you think as since you started and since you've been on Ellen since you had DJ Khaled, had Cardi B. I think just me perform, just me like maturing. And me performing better, knowing that I have to get energy. And I learned a bunch of stuff. Like, when I was younger, I always used to be like, when I was on set, I used to be like, I'm so tired. My mm-hmm. parents would be like, oh, don't let nobody, don't, <laughs> don't let nobody see that. They're going to think you tired and, like, probably don't want you to do this scene. So I always, I, so I, I know from the back of my mind, I always need to keep that energy. And, like, they'll probably give me, like, late night. They'll probably send a new script late night and I have to learn new lines. And my father, like, man. Don't make any excuses up. Like, we still got to learn this, and you want to come on that set like you already knew it, mm. even if they did. And it's going to show them that you never give up. It's going to show you that, like, you don't ever back down from a challenge. Wow. 12 years old, man. You seem like you have a, uh, so much knowledge. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to hold back from my from my conversations. Usually when I have people on here, we talk about we go into deep things. And it's something like we're going to make it fun, but I still want to have those conversations. Cause mm-hmm. I, I feel like you can. Um. You having so much success, yep. right? Did your parents have as much success as you had? Um, no, nah, not really. They were still being kids, you know. They worked a lot. They they had me as a baby till like twenty seven, twenty six, mm-hmm. something like that. And my father made up a plan, like he was gonna wait till he had me, like till he wanted to have a kid, cause he wanted to make sure that he had he had everything. Super dope. Yes. That's super dope. Yeah. My where I was gonna go with that is um you being the first in like your family to have so much success. Yeah. Do you feel any type of pressure on you at all anytime? I mean, sometimes I do. Not just for my family. It's just like today I felt a lot of pressure trying mm. to learn my lines, but also like think still think about the interview, still think about my freestyle that I'm ready to do. So I had a lot of pressure today, but for real, my family is a great supportive system. They don't really treat me no differently. That's so dope. And um, I, I I rarely feel pressure. Do you do? You, 
are because you're so young is it's hard to, to picture but are you aware of how fortunate you are to have not even the success your fat like your your, your your parents there support you in the way they do I'm definitely aware because some kids don't even have parents, and I'm really thankful mm, for mm, having mm. my parents. You know, my mom, I'm a mama's boy, but <laughs> I normally be with my dad a lot. But, like, yes, I'm so thankful for my parents. I, like I said, I couldn't do this without them, and I'm just so glad that I have both of them on set. Even though my mom has to work, she finds time to come on set and watch me, and she's always like, get more energy, Dylan. She wants me to have a lot of energy. <laughs> hey, man, it's so dope. Like, how do you deal with when your parents are trying to um, discipline you in versus giving you that tough love? Do you Is it hard to differentiate or no? Well, it is hard when it's happening, okay. but, like, I know that they're doing it for a reason, so... But, like, at the time, I'm mad. I'm, like, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> like, when I, like, when I'm having a bad day on set, I rarely have a bad day on set. But it was just this one day where they changed the whole script, and I kept messing up. My father was like, bro, what is you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I got the lines. It's just, I don't know why I keep messing up. And he's like, just bring your A game. And I'm like, I know, but, like, I'm trying. I don't know what to do. <laughs> do you ever get in trouble at home? Like outside of uh, working? Yeah, I'll probably get in trouble for yelling at my game, yelling <laughs> on my game, sp uh, spending like $100 on a game, spending a lot of money on the game. Oh, you be spending your money and then like... My father don't care as much, but my mother do. Like she'll probably have like all this Christmas money not give me anything because she like, I'm not going to see you wasting all this money on your game when it's a new game going to come out next year and you're going to mm. spend your money on there. It gives me chills, man, to see somebody like yourself um, so young. And, of, of course, from the black African-American culture and just have so much support from your family. I think it's so dope because a lot of, we don't see that a lot. We always That's see the negative things. And we need people like you, man. We need people. Uh, you are a role model to so many other kids and even to adults, believe it or not. Like, so I, um, I definitely want to continue to see you grow. What is When you read in these lines and you got these scripts, right, how do you go about memorizing your lines? So... I can't go over the script by myself because I know I'm not going to do it. Mm. So I need my father with me. He's like, when you're getting older, you're going to have to go over the script by yourself. I was like, I know, but do I feel like it? Because <laughs> like, I, when I look at the script, it's so, since I'm the main character on the show, it's so much. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my gosh. But it just seems so easy right when you learn it. But like when you just look at it and you haven't learned it yet, it'll probably be like five pages when it's just you. And I'll, I'll be mad. I'll be like, I don't really feel like doing this at all. But, you know, I still got to do it. You know, this is what I'm getting paid for. Mm -hmm. Like, come on now. So when you, your show is uh, the Young Dylan show? Yeah, is, Tyler Perry's Young Dylan. Tyler Perry's Young Dylan. And you're just, how, how, how what's going on in the show? You, so basically, he's like about 11 now. So it's a, a kid named Dylan, mm -hmm. me. He has a passion for rapping, just like me and uh, his parents. He doesn't really know his parents like that. He knows his mother. He loves his mother, but she uh, moved him in with his grandmother. His grandmother moved him in with his aunt and uncle and his two cousins because his his her his mom, she's kind of like a hillbilly, and she never sees Dylan as much mm -hmm. and always leaving Dylan. And Dylan feels a type of way about that, but he never gives up on his rapping. And the show is basically like what the family, Dylan's driving their lives crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's just situation after situation every episode. And it's a very great show. This season, this season is probably the best season. I think every season season of Tyler Perry's Young Dylan evolves a lot, but this season, I can't even say what's going to happen this season, but it's going to be crazy. So when does it um when does it usually drop? It usually drop like, since we just finished now, it's probably going to drop in like three months, two mm. months. Uh, no, it's dropping in Juneteenth. Okay, Juneteenth. okay. So question, I seen something where you was uh doing, I know, I think Cardi B had gave you advice. Yup. Um, was, and it said Tyler Perry's Young Dylan. Yep. Was that the same show or was that a spinoff or something like that? No, it was like, so it was Ellen. It was still the Ellen show, but okay. like she had me doing a bunch of tasks for her because like, you know, I was like her best friend. So she had me like also performing, but also interviewing celebrities like Will Smith, Chase the Rapper, T.I., Cardi B. So I had my own <laughs> you, just, you just sped through those guys like they're just regular. Like. Well, they're not regular. They're <laughs> legends, actually. Right. But... They had she had me doing interviews with all of them, and I was like so, I was so surprised because I had my own interviewing spot. I had like a recording studio, had plaques everywhere, pictures of me and Ellen. It was lit. That's so so to interview all of them was like amazing. It, it just taught me like, man, I want to be just like these guys. And I always ask them for advice. What should I do? Like, what is like if I'm having like pressure, like pressure myself. 
if I have it pressure, like, what should I do? And they're telling me all this advice. And they and Cardi B also told me I should make a documentary about myself and my father recording right now mm. for the documentary. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they taught me a lot, man. And I just want to be just like them. I want to be successful like them. Who, what do you think was your best piece of advice and who gave it to you? Mm. Might be Will Smith. I ain't going to cap to you. Mm. He said, never give up, work 10 times harder, and always shine your light in the room. Mm. And that's what I want to do always. Like, if I pull up to a show and, like, I'm not trying to, like, take the, if, if I'm not, like, a main character, I'm not trying to take the main character spot, but I'm sure know my lines, have that mm. energy and stuff like that. I'm going to still work 10 times harder. I like that because even what you said, I think um, a lot of people when they not the main character, they want to they trying their best to be the main character. But what you said was, "Now nah, I'm gonna give a hundred and ten percent at my character," and I yes. think that's so dope. I, like, I don't want like that's your show, dog. Have your show. I want you to be successful, but I, I'm I'm still gonna work hard. I'm still gonna know my lines. I'm show that energy on set. Be nice to everybody and stuff like that. No, nah, that's cool. That's that's super cool. Um, who was your favorite person that you've interviewed now? Ooh, I won't say interviewed, but, like, I did get to talk to Drake. It got to be Drake and Will Smith. I feel like, and Tyler Perry. I didn't really interview him, but I got to talk to him. He told me, like, when I first started, like, filming, mm -hmm. um, he taught me how to, like, face my body to the camera. Drake? No. Tyler uh, Perry. Tyler Perry, my okay, bad. Okay, okay, okay. Tyler Perry. He taught me how to, like, face my body to the camera because nobody wants to see your body like this right. camera. And always, like, show your face, but, like, just look at the person and say your lines because your yourself is, like, the money shot on the camera, so mm. you can't just let nobody see you. So that's why you always got to cheat yourself out. I know it seems so weird, but when you get used to it, it's kind of easy. But in real life, you know, I still face myself to the person because they were like, Dylan, I know you like to do eye contact, but sometimes you don't. I was like, but my mom said I always have to do eye contact. Okay. It was like, I know, but for this... You don't have to. I was like, all right. For 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 a young twelve year old that's trying to do what you're doing, they look up to Dylan. They aspire to be, they aspire to be like Dylan one day. What was some advice you would give them? I would say, never give up. Uh, always work the hardest. Work, be the like the leader in the crowd. Don't be a follower, and uh, just be yourself and chase your dreams. Also, and like Will Smith told me, shine your light, man, and like just like be yourself. And build something. And if you want to do something, do it, man. Uh, if you want to create a mansion, do it. You just have to have the right supportive system. Also have like have smarts. You ha always have to be, be smart. Do school stuff like that. You know, even though I like some kids don't like school. Me, I, I don't <laughs> like school. I still know that school is very important because you don't learn nothing if you don't school mm -hmm. that's true that's that's uh, absolutely true we, we talked about the tyler perry show yep um you have two other shows as well yes sir what shows is that so that is the kids tonight show on peacock and slime time on nickelodeon and slime time is about like nfl with my co-star uh Nate i saw Wilson. that i saw yeah, that yeah that show lit man uh i got to interview debo samuel like slime time did like like a playoff like, yeah i saw that feel i, saw I was that. getting lit y'all even though it wasn't the philadelphia eagles playing That's your favorite team yes mm -hmm. i did want to go to the uh, buccaneers and uh philly game but i was like my team probably gonna get demolished so I would have been sad to interview a player from the Buccaneers that lost. I mean, that won. So I'm glad that I went to the Cowboys and 49ers game. And to interview Debo Samuel, man, he was mad cool. And he had, like, this little, you know how you get turf? The strawberry? It's, yes. That's what we used to call it, strawberry. Yes. <laughs> Yo, that joint was crazy. I was like, I was just staring at that while I was interviewing. I was like, that don't hurt. <laughs> but, yeah, it was mad lit, man. Um, I got to, like, present the MVP award to him. And Slime Time, dope. And the Kids Tonight Show, it's me and three kids, Olivia, Wrecker, and Michael Michelle. And we basically have our own talent. Wrecker's, like, the drummer. Olivia's, like, the dancer. Michael Michelle, she has, like, the interviewing on blast. Like, she's really good at it. And me, I'm the rapper slash interviewer. And, um... That show is very fun. It's it's definitely for kids, and we got a ball pit, candy everywhere, and it's uh, also produced by uh, Jimmy Fallon. That's, that's what it's called. Kiss and that's on show. um Peacock. Peacock. Yes. Wow. That's and dope. yeah, that's filming that show was very fun. Those kids are amazing. They're very talented, and that show was definitely dope. 
Do you have to uh, remember lines for that one as well? Well, it was kind of easy for both of the two shows because it was like a um, camera where... It teleprompter. Showed, yeah, teleprompter. It mm-hmm. showed all the words for you. And it was like, I had to, my father still made me read over it, but like, I ain't had to learn it. And I was real happy about that because I got more time to play on my game, stuff like that. <laughs> How hard is it to read those teleprompter things? It's really not that hard. You didn't need like spend like two days on it, get used to it. But it's kind of like it helps you a little bit, but don't get used to it because you still need to act on it. Remember, different. yeah, okay. definitely. That's cool. Can we talk about the slime town real quick? Bet. The Eagles, your favorite team? Yes. Unfortunately, they're my favorite team too. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So, being from Annapolis and from Baltimore, what made them your, your favorite team? So, my father, he he was a real young. His family, they either like the Steelers, Ravens, or Cowboys. Mm. I like neither of them. I, the only people I really like probably mess with is like Ravens. Ravens. <laughs> but Cowboys, Steelers, we ain't friends. Get out of here. But he, when he was young, he liked Randall Cunningham. And that's what made him like the Eagles. And Number 12? Yes. Yeah, yeah, 12. yeah. That was before McNabb, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when I was younger, I just stuck with his team. I like Michael Vick because he was left-handed like me. And I also like Deshaun Jackson when he was like. <laughs> One of my favorite. That man was a ton on the field for real, man. Yeah. I miss that old Deshaun See, Jackson. I, I was an Eagles fan when I think it was McNabb first year. I oh. played I played football in Baltimore for a for team real? called um, Mount Royal Eagles. And oh yeah! I, I always wanted to play for a team that not had eagle colors, but like was a team named the Eagles. Yeah, right. So I like, so I think I was like ten when I ten. It was ninety nine, I think, something like that when mm-hmm. McNabb got drafted, or whatever. And that's I didn't really, I wasn't into football like that, watching it because I didn't understand it, mm-hmm. but I just played it, and I just was like the Eagles since then. But I don't know, like they just they haven't been good. I think they're. I think it's their draft picks. They could have got Justin Jefferson, DK Metcalf. Tell me about it, bro. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going. Like down Rager. No, I mean, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Bro, we ain't gonna doubt no Eagles <laughs> players on here, but like Eagles, they they my main man's. But like y'all need make some better be decisions. Better. It gotta be better. Facts. I feel like I don't. I was a fan when we had. You probably don't even know about these guys, Todd Pinkston. Who's that? We had wow, like this, like Freddie Mitchell. Uh, Who's that? <laughs> I know To though. I know To. You know what's funny? So I was such a diehard Eagles fan. I hated when To got traded to the Eagles. I hated it because he Why? was. You would think I would like it because that's when we went to the Super Bowl. It's just he. he First before, of all, we should have won in the Super Bowl. We should have before before To right. I feel like we were a team. Like we were like our defense was really good and when we when we won games you could see that we won games because it was us we put a team effort when TO came. He was a goat. It just made he just made it all about him. Like I don't know. I don't know. And then him and Donovan McNabb used to get into it like For real? I ain't yeah, never knew that. Yeah, like Dang, that's yeah, tough. yeah, yeah. I don't know like but yeah. yeah, man. Um how many NFL players do you think you interviewed? Ooh, that's kind of hard. I, I kind of forgot everybody that I interviewed. But, no, it wasn't that, that many people. I interviewed more basketball players, way more basketball players than NFL. So it was probably Debo. Who else? It was a, it was a few, but it was I think the most popular one was Debo. But I interviewed a bunch of basketball players. Like, from all the popular basketball players you can think of, I interviewed. Would you say Debo Sanders uh, is the best wide receiver in the NFL? No. Who do you think the best NFL wide receiver is? Mm, mm, mm. Wow, Cooper Cup. I like him. He's a great route runner, but I don't think he got that much speed. I think Devonte, Devonte Adams. It gotta be. He's good. He's really good. I don't know. So again, because the Eagles suck, they just made me a. I'm a like I'm a football fan now. Yes, because they just whatever. But <laughs> I think watching Debo Sam, Sanders like carry San Francisco. The way he, like, he literally does everything. This man was a running back and a wide receiver. That's why I think he's the best. I think he's probably the best athlete in the NFL. I think position-wise, like, the way he switches his positions and, like, also still scores, he's the best at doing that. But wide receiver-wise, he's really good, but I think he ain't better than Devontae. Yeah. Because, like, Devontae's the only person that really can, like, catch Jalen, uh, what's the name, Ramsey, off mm-hmm. guard. It actually score on Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey actually got burnt a couple times, but he did. <laughs> but like, but Devonte, he's more physical and more route running sure. than speed. You feel me? For sure, for so. sure, for sure. I think nah. I, I, if if he wasn't my number one, he'd probably be my number two. Yeah, facts. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. uh, Debo is definitely in top five. 
for I'll sure. I'll put them top five. For sure. If you had to, right, <clears throat> name your best NFL athlete of all time, who would you say? Whoa. Position? Like quarterback? Wide receiver? It could be. I'm just saying athlete. So it could be anybody. Whoever you think the best athlete is. Okay, I'll do quarterbacks. Mm. Um, Actually, no. Wide receivers. Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice? Yes. That's not bad. It's not. That's a really good one. Because he probably will be in my top five. My number one probably would be Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders as a wide receiver? No, just athlete. Like athlete? I think, I think he was. I think he was a better cor- cornerback than and anybody else was at their position. Fat. Whoa. Oh, wow. So I think he was a better cornerback than Jerry Rice was a wide receiver. Dang. I mean, you can't really say that because he barely played the wide receiver, but, but he was really good at wide no, receiver. No, not though. saying that he was a... a Good wide receiver, better wide receiver than Jerry Rice. I'm just saying, I think he was a better cornerback than Jerry Rice was a wide receiver. That's kind of, oh, that's kind of hard. I ain't it gonna is. cap. It is, it is, because it was a different era. You need to think about current too. No, that was the same era. Those two, I think they was similar. They were similar eras. They were similar well, eras. but like I'm talking like, ha, ah, Deion Sanders, he was good, like for yeah. real. But Jerry man. Rice was really good. Like I'm he not was. Take, if you were to say that, I wouldn't argue that because Jerry Rice is probably number one wide receiver. Ever to me, Deion Sanders literally pulled like a freaking what's he, he pulled his groin yeah, while the, high stepping into the he, top. like that's crazy. He's just a savage. Like this man pulled up to the draft like freaking uh draft combine and left right after he finished doing. <laughs> yeah, it. the Jericho with the uh with the gold chains. Tell me about this. Who you think um is the best basketball player right now? Wow. Hmm. 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 That's kind of hard. I ain't going to cap. Uh, who's scoring the more points right now? Is it Giannis? Uh, no, actually LeBron. Actually, it's LeBron. LeBron? Yeah, LeBron is actually scoring the most points. I feel like by himself, he's like, but his team, his team is kind of sold, sold yeah. a lot. And it's they teams. ain't making it to the playoffs, so I can't really say. They suck. Currently, they were, he's the best because they ain't even making it to the playoffs. He sucks. So I I'll mean, they say, suck. He, he's, he's really good. I'll say Giannis. Giannis. Mm, okay. Who was your favorite NBA John player? Who? John Morant. Mm, or okay. LaMelo. Nah, John Morant is going crazy. Yeah. Facts. John Morant or LaMelo. Is that all time? All time. Oh, yeah. nah. All time. Who was your best oh. NBA player all time? The Michael Jordan. Mm. Really? Well, what you know about Jordan? A lot. Oh. I watched The Last Dance. <laughs> <laughs> so you would choose Jordan over LeBron? Yes. Mm. I feel like Jordan has more athleticism wait nah probably not got more handles got more shooting LeBron could pull up from anywhere though I can't even so that's kind of hard but I think currently it's like I think it gets easier every every like 10 years because Jordan they was over here punching yeah like it was a hard that was a hard league it was a hard league so you can't really say who's better and they were barely in the same time frame mm. but LeBron in his rookie year they he did he was really good mm. I'll say Jordan though okay I like it was just because he played in a hard harder like it's league. funny because you 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 probably got me beat because I don't even remember those times so I don't even I try not to get in that debate I would say Kobe me personally Kobe I mean I think working hard wise he has it. I'm savage. Because, like, this man broke, like, Lily. Well, not broke it, but, like. Mama mentality. Yes. <laughs> but Wilt Chamberlain, I'm definitely not going to say he's the best because they didn't even have the three-second violation in the paint. <laughs> so. How do you know all this? Because a lot of people told me a lot. <laughs> and this man had, like, 14 assists, like, 30 rebounds a game, stuff like that. Who? All right. So, since you into, you're kind of, like, into sports a lot. Uh, Do you have a favorite a- analyst? What the heck is that? Like uh, sports, the people that talk about sports. How would I explain it? Oh, yeah. uh, um, Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. He's Smith. Funny. Really? I ain't gonna cap. He's funny as a mug. You think, you think that's your that's your favorite? Well, I don't really know that many. Oh, it's fine. So, but if you like Stephen, Stephen A. Smith, a. Smith, it's cool. It's okay. And I love Shannon Sharp. I love Shannon Sharp. Who's that? You don't know who Shannon Sharp is? Oh, you gotta catch up. You gotta watch some uh, undisputed. I, that, the only Shannon. thing I write. The only thing I watch is. Charles Barkley and Shaq and okay. Stephen A. Smith. So okay. Okay. And Stephen A. Smith fussing with the other dude is so <laughs> funny. I can see that, especially with the baby filter. I can see that. Who are some of the um your your favorite people to look up to right now? I guess. I mean, my parents. Uh, Chad with Bozeman, mm. Will Smith, Tom Holland. Mm. Um. Uh. Definitely. 
who else? Wow. Um, and also, mm, kind of hard. I ain't gonna cap. Issa Rae. Mm, that's a good one. A bunch. It's a that's bunch. A good it's one. a lot. Mm. Question. If you had to be an entrepreneur or get a show on a big network, what you what you what you do? Entrepreneur. You what? Mm-hmm. Really? Why? I don't really know. I feel like that's more of my dream than getting booked for a bigger show. Mm. I'd rather follow my dream. I like that. Hey, this is a great interview, man. You ready to rap? Yes, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. Let's get it popping. All right, bet. All right.